okay uh, just now uh, i was uh, discussing about uh, uh, two functions right uh, here uh, two functions uh, are called as uh, f i r s t in capital letters okay that function itself is uh, written as a uh, upper case letters first and one more function is follow f o l l o w so very interesting and very easy uh, functions and operations guys don't worry mm, uh, and uh, very important also because uh, you will be asked in, in your exam okay so these uh, two functions are very much helpful to construct the tables which tables parsing tables particularly predictive parsing tables so to construct these tables these two functions are very much essential and these two functions are not only using in a top down parsing which is my current or, or present main topic so these two functions can be used in bottom up parsing also so these two functions are uh, used in both top down parsing as well as in bottom up parsing so now we will study these two functions what they do okay so very interesting nothing is there uh, here <clears throat> Uh, we are going to define the first of alpha so what is this first of alpha as i already told it's a function so first of alpha what is this alpha alpha is a string which is made up of grammar symbols or any characters or any symbols okay so it is a string so which is alpha so then first of alpha is it is a set you remember the first of alpha is what it is as i already told in just a previous class that it is a function actually but it gives us one value or some value in the in the form of set set how we write a set set theory i think you have studied right so it gives us a set so that set of what it is set of terminals it is set of terminals which are beginning with the strings which are derived from this alpha so definitely i think you are not understanding don't worry i will make it clear okay so suppose if your derivation is like this suppose your derivation is like this that is alpha is deriving epsilon or empty string by using zero or more steps okay double arrow mark is nothing but deriving derive okay uh, on top of a star uh, on top of that double arrow mark is star is there what it means so alpha is deriving epsilon by using zero or more steps then that alpha uh, sorry that epsilon is also in first of alpha it means that these all terminals are there no in these all terminals epsilon is also one of the terminals if that alpha is deriving that epsilon the alpha is deriving that epsilon then first of alpha first of alpha will be epsilon also okay so for simple example don't get uh, confusion one simple example i take here that is suppose your uh, derivation is like this that is a non terminal capital a is deriving these strings c followed by gamma c followed by gamma okay so here uh, both of them are written in uh, small letters and uh, yesterday i told you notations for non terminals terminals so many things i discussed there when you should use capital letters when you should use italics when you should use lower case letters when you should use lower case starting or beginning alphabets when you should use lower case last alphabets like u v w x y z all things i have discussed right so this c and gamma are called as terminals here these terminals are derived from the non terminal capital a by taking how many steps zero or more okay at the end you will get c gamma okay but in between a and c gamma there may be many number of again intermediate derivations here which are not written here actually this is the final product okay so you will get c gamma from a by using n number of derivations okay so then here in this derivation c is in a first of a so just nothing is here a is deriving some terminals among these all terminals set of terminals so which is the first terminal is there no that itself that terminal is called as first of a that's all nothing is here so here in these terminals c is first here so first of a will be c clear now so this is very simple guys nothing is there 
then to preview this how this first can be used during this predictive parsing consider two productions like a is yielding alpha or else a is yielding beta so two productions are here okay so two alternatives are there for a so two productions are there having the same head that is a so i call them as a productions so here first of alpha and first of beta so first of alpha and first of beta it is not that it is always first of non terminal like a that is first of a sometimes we have to calculate first of the body of this production also that is first of alpha first of beta also okay first function can be applied at the lhs side also first can first function can be applied to rhs also okay so here first of alpha and first of beta are disjoint sets of course alpha is different beta is different and first of alpha and first of beta are disjoint set disjoint set means what whatever the set you will get for alpha first of alpha means what i already just now told you it is going to give me a value in the form of a set set of some elements so any element which is in this first of alpha it is not repeated it is not repeated in first of beta it means among first of alpha and first of beta two sets there is no any common factor there is no any common element that is called as a disjoint set right so first of alpha and first of beta are disjoint sets then we can choose uh, any uh, production between uh, this one whether you choose a is deriving alpha or whether you have to choose a is deriving beta okay among these two productions we have to choose any one of these productions how you can choose by looking into the next input by looking into the next input symbol a so since that next symbol a or next input character a can be in maximum either it should be either in first of a or else in first of b the character a should not be present in both first of a as well as first of b so because of that only i am telling that there is no any common factor between first of a and first of b so a will be a is a character input character just like previous one example i had taken like like uh, r e a d read right so there what happened first character was r which was present in both the alternatives okay because of that only we looked into next input character that is e then instead of making it as r o a d road we made it as r e a d and e is appearing in only one alternative not in both the alternatives if you observe that example what i had already shown already discussed when i was discussing about back tracking right so that input next input character a will be either in first of a or in first of b not in both okay for example if that first of b for example that character a is in first of b beta then you you will choose the production a is yielding beta if the character a is present in first of alpha then definitely i will choose the production a is yielding alpha okay so this idea already we have implemented in ll1 grammar ll1 grammar that's only i was telling that ll1 grammar ll grammar is suitable for which parsing top down parsing correct so sub categories of top down parsing i yesterday discussed that is that is recursive descent parsing in recursive descent parsing again it is divided as predictive parsing predictive parsing why it is called as predictive it is not using any back tracking so it is called as predictive okay so this idea same idea only we have implemented in top down parsing that is ll1 grammars so of course my main topic what i am discussing now is top down parsing only so i am discussing about which grammars ll 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 grammar in that ll grammar this same technique only we have used correct if you consider if you want to consider you consider that r o a d r e a d example right then let me to go to next function that is a follow of a what do you mean by this follow of a simple nothing is there if for any non terminal 
okay for any non terminal immediately after that non terminal anything whatever it is uh, appearing that is called as follow of a follow of a so this follow of a is once again a set set of what set of terminals so earlier also first of a was a set set of terminals here also follow of a is a terminals a that can appear immediately to the right of that non terminal a okay so that means that the set of terminals a in such a way that there exist a derivation of the form <coughs> the start symbol s is deriving alpha a small a beta by using zero or more steps now okay so here what are these alpha and beta for some alpha and beta this start symbol start symbol is deriving this alpha capital a followed by small a then followed by beta so here easily you can say what is a follow of a what is follow of a follow of a is nothing but what here definitely it is a small letter a so after a whatever it is there it is small letter a that is follow of a okay then in between suppose uh in between this capital a and small letter a in between this capital a and small letter a in this portion just observe my mouse cursor guys in this part in between capital a and small a there may be some other characters okay there may be some other characters if some other characters are there then they derived epsilon and disappear it means that here if nothing is there then here epsilon will be there epsilon is nothing but empty string so always remember follow of a is here in this example it is a but sometimes what happens sometimes what happens after this capital a you just imagine there is no small letter a and there is no beta also this uh, derivation is just like this s is deriving alpha capital a that's all so after a anything is not present its meaning is nothing but there is a empty string is present which is hidden empty string so always remember guys empty string that is epsilon will be always follow of the non terminals non terminals if the non terminal is a dead end it is a dead end clear and also one more symbol we will use here to indicate that the a is a rightmost non terminal or terminal so here we are going to use a symbol that is a dollar actually it is a meta character okay you know uh, cap or caret sing symbol caret symbol or cap symbol caret symbol or cap symbol indicates the beginning of a line or a statement or a sentence similarly dollar indicates a end of a statement end of a line so always remember dollar will be also in a follow of a what is follow of a it is a set set of terminals there among those all terminals dollar will be also present in a follow of a so this dollar is called as a special end marker symbol end marker symbol okay so here how to calculate this first of a follow of a we will see here now so suppose to calculate first of x for all grammar symbols x so we should apply these following three rules what are those three rules okay and until when we should keep on applying these rules until no more terminals are added to the first of s it means we will keep on adding the terminals to this uh, first test the first set so if there is no any more uh, terminal to add to this set at that time we will stop this procedure so let us apply these uh, three rules what are those three rules so here in this uh, first of x expression if x is a terminal if x is a terminal then first of x is that terminal itself remember okay if it is a terminal if it is a terminal it means that you are not going to define it once again in your production so the first of 
that terminal will be that terminal itself okay so here i have written that set here in this flower brackets only one element is there that is x okay then the main thing is if that x is a non terminal if that x is a non terminal and if your production is in this form x is yielding y1 y2 y3 up to yk if this is a production and x is definitely it is a non terminal and for some k value which is greater than or equal to 1 k value is greater than or equal to 1 then place a in a first of x we have to put this a character in first of x if that a is in first of y it means that as just now i told you we can apply first of a first function at a lh side also or rh side also if you are applying first of y and in this first of y the character a is present if okay suppose if the first of y containing a character small letter a then immediately you can freely without bothering about anything you can put that small letter a in the first of x also it means if these people are having a first of a first of y as a character then the same character can be present in a first of non-terminal x okay don't worry guys these all are the things okay just remember it how it is i will tell you okay so then epsilon is in all of these yeah, first of y1 of course epsilon is everywhere so that epsilon can be also present in this first of x so it is just nothing but whatever you are getting here as a first of y first of y2 first of y3 first of y so if you are getting them as a first of y1 y2 y3 the same characters will be in a first of x also so that's all then if x is a if x is in this format or a production that is if x is yielding epsilon it is a production it means x is a producing epsilon x is a non-terminal and epsilon is a terminal then add that epsilon also to this first of x i already told you this clear then here we will see how to do this how to calculate actually this first function for any string if that string is in this form x1 x2 up to xn okay so let us focus on how to calculate first function for the string x1 x2 xn very important guys these steps one four to five lines are there but very important lines okay so how to calculate first for the any given input input string like um, id star id or else uh, id plus id if your input is like that id star id for that input string how to calculate the first function okay what we have to do is first add to first of x1 x2 x3 it means first you find out first of this string okay first of this string what we have to add we have to add all non epsilon symbols all non epsilon symbols of first of x1 it means one by one all the characters you take from your input for example as i told you your input is like id star id you should find out first of id first of star first of id okay so individually if you find out first of id first of star first of id then that non epsilon symbols if you are getting you add them all to this first of the entire set or entire the string first of id star id then also what we have to add is we have to once again add these non epsilon symbols of first of x2 first of x2 okay first of x2 is nothing but the next character that is it may be first of a star or it may be first of uh, id okay so here instead of uh, id and star and id i take them as a termin uh, non terminal first first terminal non terminal second non terminal like that so first non terminal whatever you get as a first of x1 the output of a first of x1 you you have to add those all non epsilon symbols to this entire set 
that is first of LHS. Then we have to add non epsilon symbols once again in the next step, which are in a first of X2. Only when one condition is there, only when it is, you can add non epsilon symbols of a first of X2 only when epsilon is already in first of X, X1. Epsilon is already present in first of X1. Okay, so here I made it clear that first of X1 will be having some elements which are non epsilon symbols also. And at last, if there is a epsilon, you leave that epsilon and you just add only non epsilon symbols to this first of X1, X2, X3 up to X1, Xn. And in the next step, what you do? It means the next symbol you will take that is X2. If X2, F of X2 contains again some non epsilon symbols, you add only those non epsilon symbols to first of X1, X2, X3 up to Xn. You no need to add, you no need to add those non epsilon symbols, okay. If epsilon is not in if epsilon is not in f of x1 if f epsilon is already present in f of x1 then only then only you have to add non epsilon symbols to x2 clear similarly when you go to next step that is x3 once again you add non epsilon symbols of first of x3 once again you add non epsilon symbols to f of x3 symbols of non epsilon symbols of f of x3 if epsilon is already present in first of x1 and first of x2 clear and so on like this next character next symbol next symbol we should keep on continue finally we will add epsilon to first of x1 x2 x3 x1 it means that at the beginning only you don't add epsilon to your set you add epsilon at the last clear similarly now uh, i want to show you how exactly sir this much everything you are telling what it is actually it is very simple guys nothing is there if you observe this uh, production and a parse tree here here mm, yes is a start symbol yes is a start symbol and what it is going to yield it is going to yield alpha followed by capital A, followed by small a, followed by beta, right? Then, again, what is this A? It is a non-terminal. So, again, I have to define it, right? So, if I define this A as C gamma, C gamma. So, why I have written this, gra uh, this diagram? Based on this explanation, what I have done actually. Here, uh, I was telling, no? A is deriving C gamma by using a zero or more uh, steps, right? So same thing here I have used. So this A is yielding or deriving C followed by gamma by using zero or more steps. But uh, from where we are getting this A? We got this A from S. Yes. Actually S yes is yielding alpha followed by A and small letter A beta. Now the question is, what is the first of A? Very simple guys. First of A is nothing but C here. Among these two characters, which one is the first here? C. So it is a first of A. So C is in a first of A. C is in a first of A. Okay. And what is the follow of A? Follow of A is nothing but immediately at the right side, whatever the character is there, it is a follow of A. Already I told you. Okay. So a is in follow of A. Are you understanding? C is in first of A and A is in follow of A. Just this much. Okay. So, but why I am telling these all things here, why I am telling this all complicated rules is these rules may seem very complicated, but they are very much important, guys. Why? To produce that predictive table to produce or to construct that predictive table what I used in uh, just now in the previous uh, uh, this one uh, class predictive table to construct 
we need these all rules if you understand these rules easily then it will be very very easy to construct that predictive table okay so that uh, i explain later how to construct that predictive table and all those things don't worry now okay only understand these rules so like this if we uh, keep on postponing uh, adding uh, the epsilon until at the end of the uh, procedure so at the beginning we should not add epsilon to the uh, first of any terminal uh, sorry non terminal okay so then uh, next thing is uh, here next thing is how to calculate follow of a now just now what i discussed the rules to compute or calculate first function now i am going to discuss how to calculate or compute the function follow follow of a okay here you remember these three rules guys to calculate first function and also this is also very important this procedure whatever i discussed in this paragraph then we will see how to cons how to find out or calculate follow of a particularly you can see here for all non terminals you can see here we are applying follow function to non terminals only then apply the following rules until where we should keep on applying these rules until nothing is added to follow of set it means once again there is no more any terminal to add or there is no more any element to add to this set okay so how it is so first step what you have to do is you have to use this dollar symbol here which is indicating end of any statement or end of any line or any uh, uh, any line or any uh, uh, yeah yeah it is a dollar is indicating end of a line only okay so this dollar we should put in a first follow of yes where yes is a start symbol of course it is a non terminal yes is a start symbol and dollar is the input right end marker input right end marker it means already i told you about dollar dollar is a uh, symbol to you uh, to uh, which is used to denote end of a line or end of a statement so it is called as end marker so first thing what we have to do is we have to insert or we have to push this dollar into follow of yes set okay then second rule is if there is a production of the form if there is a production of the form if there is a production of the format or syntax like this a is yielding alpha b and beta if your production is like this then everything inside this first of beta here i told you first of beta it means i am talking about first not about follow just remember i am not talking about follow i am talking about first of beta everything whatever you will get you know in the set first of beta except epsilon in the follow of b it means that it means that if your production is like this and here you are you are applying follow of b sorry uh, uh, follow of a right but now if you want to find out follow of b now okay if you want to find out follow of b definitely follow of b means what after this capital b whatever the symbol is there that is in follow of b correct what is the symbol is there definitely there is beta is there in that beta also what i have to do i have to find out first of that beta first of that beta whatever all the elements you got no that are non epsilon symbols those all non epsilon symbols will be in this follow of capital b very simple guys very easy nothing is there follow of b you have to find out follow of b its name itself is at the right side of this capital b which are following this capital b those all symbols will be obviously present in this follow of b what are there only beta is there and beta is a non terminal 
so for the first of that terminal beta if you are getting some symbols as in the form of a set of course first of beta is a set except non epsilon except uh, epsilon symbol the remaining all symbols which are called as non epsilon symbols non epsilon symbols will be definitely present in follow of beta this rule then third rule is if there is a production of this form once again a is yielding alpha followed by b followed by beta then first of beta contains epsilon then everything in follow of a then everything in follow of a is in follow of b it means that it means that here b already i told you what is follow of b just now i told you so first of beta will be follow of b right so first of b if it contains epsilon symbol it means that first of b is having one non empty string then everything it means everything in the follow of a it means that fall guys first of beta having epsilon means what it is it does not have anything here its meaning is it doesn't have anything so ultimately your production will be only a is yielding alpha b only because beta is nothing beta is a empty string so you can ignore it so then next your question will be what your question will be you have to find out the follow of beta now so, sorry follow of b now your question is you have to find out follow of b how to find out follow of b nothing is there nothing is there then you have to take help of your non terminal from where you are yielding so non terminal a is having some follow of a that follow of a will be follow of b you can take those all follow of a as a follow of b no problem are you getting now so follow of e so sorry follow of a is present in follow of b if your production is like this if your production is like this so these three rules you should remember and you should understand you should not forget because this calculation of first function and calculation of follow function is very very important uh, to construct uh, the parsing uh, table predictive parsing table okay how to construct that predictive parsing table i discuss it later okay so now uh, let us go to next topic in my notes it is 3.5 which is the last topic of your uh, third module okay so it is bottom up parsing today i discussed top do top down parsing right so that is nothing but constructing your tree from uh, top to bottom right similarly here we are going to construct the tree from bottom to top so here how to construct sir you can see here your input is id star id your input is id star id for this input string by using this grammar you are going to construct the parse tree that is the final result parse tree okay so as per this grammar as per this grammar you are going to construct a parse tree by for this input string id star id so start your journey from your string given input string that is id star id next what you have to do you have to search that id in this grammar and it uh, it's uh, 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 it's a replacement can be done by what capital f so id can be uh, id is reduced to f i i tell another word instead of uh, the word replacement i use one word that is reduction so that id is reduced to f so id is reduced to f then again you search that f here and f can be reduced to t correct so f is re reduced to t then after that you can observe here one production like a t is yielding a t star f so here i already got a t so just hold on then star f is there so try to get this star f now so for that one i hold it in here only that is t next what i do is i reduce this id 
because the star I cannot reduce. So I keep this star as it is. I reduce ID. Again, I reduce ID to F. ID to F. Now you got a production like uh, T star F. T star F. This entire T star F. Okay, this entire T star F here, once again, here you can reduce this T star F to T. You can reduce this T star F to T. So, this T star F is reduced to T. Right? So, after that, this T can be reduced to E. So, this T is reduced to E. Right? See guys, we started our journey from leaf node and we end with root node so that is called as bottom up parsing bottom up parsing so for bottom up parsing which grammar is um, suitable of course you are right l r grammar is suitable first l is telling to scan the input from left to right and capital r is telling to perform right most derivation rightmost derivation here we are doing rightmost derivation only how it is i tell you don't worry sir how it is here there is no uh, right rightmost derivation actually you are doing a leftmost der derivation you may ask me because among this uh, f and id okay among this id star id first id i replaced i reduced to f and here again left side left side left side only i am coming Sir, then how can you tell that it is a uh, uh, rightmost derivation? Actually, it is the rightmost derivation, guys. Even though this, these all steps of this construction of parsing tree looks like they are using uh, leftmost derivation, it is not a leftmost derivation. Actually, it is a rightmost derivation, which is hidden here. I will tell you how it is. Okay. At the last, you will get the required uh, string that is id star id. Okay. So here as i already told you just now bottom up parsing for bottom up parsing you need l r grammar l r grammar okay l r you can also call it as a left recursion left recursion okay so it is nothing but in lhs whatever the non terminal is there immediately it should appear in a rhs you can observe here e is here here also e is here here t is there here also T is there. So then this grammar is which grammar? LR grammar. This LR grammar is very much suitable for bottom up parsing guys. Again and again I am telling you. Keep it in your, in your mind. Okay. Don't forget it. Then reductions. Next topic I go to reductions. Here you will understand how I performed the rightmost derivation. Reduction means what here? Huh? Reduction is nothing but just now you reduced id to f f to t right the, that step is called as reduction okay here uh, 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 guys uh, i will end up the class today here only because uh, i cannot complete this topic within uh, 5 or 10 minutes uh, so uh, I wind up the class today here because uh, this topic is not able to complete in uh, this uh, 5 or 10 minutes because now I think a meeting is going to end. So better uh, I continue this uh, topic in the next class. Okay. Uh, tomorrow is a Saturday. Tomorrow I take a class and uh, I complete this module. Okay. Third module because I am almost in the end of the third module. But these uh, last some two or three subtopics are there. These are not able to complete now. Uh, I complete it in uh, next class. Okay, guys. Okay, have a nice day. Uh, you can leave the meeting.